There are a lot of weird things in the world of Wuthering Waves, from mutated animals to random women wanting the rover's seed. But alongside these things are the rather strange phenomena that occur on the planet of Solaris 3. There's rain that falls upwards, gravity completely turned off in some locations, and even an ocean or something appearing smack dab in the middle of the sky. What are these weird phenomena and why is the physics on this planet taking a day off? That's what we'll be discussing in this video. The strange phenomena that have occurred on the planet ever since the lament took place. More specifically, we'll be discussing the etheric sea, retroact rain, and gravity loss. Before we explore these ideas though, if you want to see more Wuthering Waves, Honkai Star Rail, or Genshin Impact lore content, do consider subscribing to the channel. The law in Wuthering Waves is currently in its very early stages. A lot of concepts have been introduced, though some of them are very likely to be subject to change as the story evolves. Also, just to warn you, given some of these things are only briefly explained within the context of the story, there might be certain details I miss out or misinterpret, so just keep that in mind. Now, to understand some of the phenomena I mentioned in the intro, I have to go back to the event that started it all, the lament. Very little is known about the lament itself, but it's an all-encompassing term to describe the disaster that occurred on the planet of Solaris 3, which triggered all these unusual phenomena. While the lament seemingly flipped the laws of physics on its head, we don't know what triggered the lament itself. All the odd phenomena that occurred subsequent to the lament is collectively referred to as the wave 1 phenomena. Again, we don't know why it's termed as such, but given the game's law centers around frequencies and sounds, a wave function like name is likely on brand here. Anyways, there are actually quite a few unique events that can be grouped under the wave 1 phenomena. The three more common ones are the tacit fields, tacit discords, and the appearance of the material known as tacitite. For what it's worth, I've already covered these three subjects in another video, so if you want to get a more detailed explanation on them, you can check that video out. There is one interesting thing about these terms that I want to slip in here, and it's related to the word tacit. Given the lore is themed around sounds and vibration, the musical definition of tacit means to be silent at a particular section or whatever musical piece you are performing. It just means that the musician doesn't need to play anything and just remains silent. I think it's an interesting way to indicate that perhaps these phenomena occurred without much warning and silently appeared right after the lament took place, leaving many people rather confused as to their origins or even purpose. Perhaps this is why they are termed as tacit discords or tacit fields, since the fields just randomly appear with no rhyme or reason. It's just an interesting tidbit I found, but let's move on to the other phenomena that are the main subject of this video. Aside from the tacit phenomena, there are three other strange wave 1 phenomena that occur on Solaris 3 which are the etheric sea, the retroact rain, and gravity loss. I'm going to talk about the etheric sea first because it's the one we know the least about and it ties in better when I eventually get to talking about the retroact rain. Essentially, the etheric sea is a weather phenomena that creates a suspended layer of water in midair or in the sky. The sky would resemble an upside down surface of water and these etheric seas often occur near or around tacit fields. In fact, according to Yang Yang, whenever an etheric sea appears, it's an indication that a new tacit field is taking shape. So these events seem to be linked to one another. The etheric sea seems to also have some adverse effect on the terminals or guards most resonators use. And according to Qi Xia, they can disrupt the signals the terminals put out, preventing users from calling in for help. This might indicate that the etheric sea may output some form of energy that envelops the tacit fields, and this energy can interfere with the functioning of the tools people commonly use. Beyond that, not much else is known about the etheric sea or its true function other than it being a form of condensed remnant energy that is a precursor to the tacit fields. It's possible that the sea itself might be connected to a different time and space entirely and what might cause those within its vicinity to hallucinate and see the past. But in order to understand that, we need to first discuss the retroact rain, so let's move on to that next. According to our resident consultant Alto, the retroact rain is a form of condensed remnant energy from the etheric sea, though from the way it looks, it seems the rain flows up into the sky forming the etheric sea. He mentions that the rain conjures illusions of past events for those exposed to it, and we actually see Jian experience this firsthand. Also, this seeing into the past thing comes in later when I talk about the gravity loss, so just keep this at the back of your mind for now. 
There are a total of three stages before retroact rain fully forms. The first stage is indistinguishable from normal rain, but things get weirder in the second stage. As it progresses, more and more rain droplets will start to float and hang in mid-air, much like that one scene from that movie with the wizards. In its third stage is when the rain starts floating upwards and collects at a certain height above the affected area. This is what is thought to form the etheric sea. It is in the third stage that anyone within the vicinity is subjected to hallucinations of the past, though it's implied that these aren't mere visions but an actual glimpse into the past itself. So I suppose keeping in with the theme of rewinding time, it makes sense why the rain would fall upwards, kind of like time itself going backwards and why those affected can actually see the past. There is for sure some timey-wimey stuff happening here given Alto himself claims that many of the researchers of this particular phenomena had ulterior motives when conducting the research. Most of them got involved due to wanting to see a past event or their now long dead loved ones. Another interesting thing is that those from the court of Cervante have tried to actually recreate this rain as part of their experiments, and it was revealed that they were partly funded by an overseer from the Fraxodus. If you didn't know, one of the goals of the Fraxodus is to bring about the next lament, but they also have a long-standing interest in humanity's evolution through the absorption of tacit discords. Given retroact rain appears prior to a tacit field formation, the Fraxodus might be interested in how the tacit discords form and why they are researching the retroact rain itself. Though alternatively, it could just be that the Fraxodus wish to understand the lament further so that they may artificially trigger a second one. Regardless, the retroact rain is slightly more well understood compared to the etheric sea and both have some connection with time and the formation of tacit fields and discords. Beyond that, however, we will just end up delving too far into the realm of guesswork, so for now, let's move on. Last on this list is the weird phenomena of gravity loss, which is slightly the easiest to explain among these things as it's all in the name. Due to the lament, certain areas within the world of weathering waves exhibit weakening gravity. That's why you sometimes see buildings, cars, or debris suspended in midair. Now, I'm not sure if the universe in this game uses the same physical laws we follow, but let's say for a second that it does. In Einstein's model of the universe, gravity isn't so much an attractive force between two objects, but rather a curve or bend within the fabric of space-time. This curve is what causes objects to fall into one another or appear to attract other objects. The higher the mass of an object, the more it bends this fabric of space-time and thus the more gravity is exerted. Basically, matter tells space-time how to curve and curved space-time tells matter how to move. If we assume the same laws apply in the game, this means that the lament has caused fundamental changes to space and time itself that results in certain areas having pockets of wonky gravity. It kind of makes sense given many of the wave 1 phenomena have some relation to space and time, such as the retroact rain allowing people to see the past in some limited capacity. So it's likely gravity loss may just be due to the change in physical loss of the planet itself. Whether it has any deeper meaning beyond this as far as the story or lore is concerned, I'm not really sure. So as far as we know, the interconnected flow of these phenomena seems to start off with the formation of retroact rain, then people get hallucinations or glimpses into the past, then the etheric sea forms, followed by the tacit fields, and finally the tacit discords. While individually these phenomena can seem random, I can't help but think that they were purposely designed, and the tacit discords aren't random occurrences but meticulously planned. Maybe all of this was a result of some failed experiments long ago, and perhaps there is a larger story here, but for now, this is all we have. While we have learned quite a bit about this in the main story, I'd like to caution you about a few things. Firstly, sometimes these kind of games hide little tidbits of lore behind texts or world quests, and there might be details I'm missing here, which might change how we interpret all of this information. Secondly, the game is still in its early phases, and as I mentioned earlier, as we learn more about the lore, some of these concepts might ultimately change. We don't yet have the full picture and while some of these descriptions come from the in-game characters themselves, we have to take it with a grain of salt. If there is however some additional context that I missed out, feel free to share them in the comments. Also, let me know what you think these things actually represent. Are they clues to what happened in the past or are they just results of physics taking a day off after the lament? Tell me in the comments. 
That does it for this video though. If you enjoyed watching it, do consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Thanks so much for watching and as usual, have a nice day.